Hey guys, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. So originally I wasn't going to do this video. I kept going back and forth on it because I knew it was going to take forever for me to do. And I felt like at this point it's kind of like past now and no one's gonna care. And it's just like way late. Um, but I keep getting more and more books and I really want to redo my shelves. And all of these books have been sitting in literally sitting in stacks on my floor because I have almost no room left on my shelves. And I really want to go about um, redoing my shelves. And sorry, the dog is playing with her toy. Can you see her? So I have a, I'm working, I have a work in progress with um, an extra bedroom in my house that I want to turn into my library. Um, it's a slow going. I have to clean it out and do things to it but I eventually do want to move these shelves and my computer and everything into that room and hopefully turn it into a uh, book study filming room so I don't have to keep doing it in my actual bedroom although the acoustics are probably a lot better in here than they will be in there but we'll see it's probably going to be a while until I can figure that out. I do want to go through my shelves and do another unhaul and just reconfigure and make space for all of these new books that I have to put on. And I figured that I might as well do a haul. I haven't done a haul in probably over a year. Uh, so there's like 90, almost 100 books that I'm going to go through today. I'm not giving the synopsis of them. That's going to take way, way too long. Um, but I do have them separated by like how I acquired them. And then I'm just going to go through what I have. And I decided that I would do this now because within the last couple weeks I did order more books online that are on their way and I figured I'd better just do this and get it over with before it just gets out of control. So these are the pretty much the books I've acquired in the last six to eight months. I have a stack of books that were gifted to me, books that I got on Amazon or online somewhere, books that I got new at Barnes and Noble, books that I got at the used bookstore that I took you to in the go shopping with me. Um, and I don't have those, <laughs> all those historicals that I hauled in that video, I are not in this video. We're just gonna get started and I'm gonna do this as quickly and painlessly as possible. Just to get it off of my, cause it's, if they're sitting here and I just, I keep looking at them and I'm like, I need to haul them before I put them away. And it's just, it's bothering me that I haven't done the haul, even though I could, I really wasn't going to do it. But if I don't do it, it's just going to nag at me for a long time. So we're going to start with the two books that I got from Book of the Month. I hauled these in uh, a reading vlog recently, but if you didn't watch that vlog, I'm going to show them to you now. These are the December picks for Book of the Month. And the first one is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. I did read this one for... Did I read it in a vlog? I think I was going to do a holiday reading vlog and I never got to it, but I did read this one. I did really enjoy it, so I gave it four stars. The other book that I added on to that box is A Flicker in the Dark by Tracy Willingham. I read The Whisper Man and this sounds similar vibes to that. So, and I'm kind of getting a little bit more into trying out uh, suspense thriller stuff. So I decided to give this one a go as well. And I did skip the books for January and February. I just, nothing was really speaking to me. So I didn't get any books from either of those months from Book of the Month. The next two books were actually given to me by the author, a friend of mine. Uh, her friend actually uh, was publishing these and asked if I would be interested in getting copies for review. Um, they are nonfiction. So the first one is tarot journal for beginners reflect record and track your insights by don marino um i did start to read this and then i realized like, it could probably be more beneficial to me if i actually had a tarot deck which i don't so i will be going through this again once i get my own tarot card deck because it's literally like how to it's it's so interesting and there's little like exercises and stuff you can do and how to read tarot cards. So that's really interesting. And thank you to the author for giving me a free copy. And then also by the same author. So this was her, her first beginner's guide. And then she also had a more in-depth one, the complete guide to tarot, master the card, sharpen, sharpen your intuition and unlock magic within you. So this is her second book that came out. And this one's a lot thicker. Um, and I love this. I just love the matte covers on these. They're super nice. And it's so insightful and um i love the illustrations in them so i'm actually i haven't read this one yet 
um, just because I haven't, again, gotten my tarot card deck to play around with it. But I'm really excited to finally get to dive into these two both. And I will leave the link for you guys down below if you want to get your own copies of these tarot books. What do we want to do next? Um, I guess we'll do books that were gifted to me. So a lot of these were from Christmas um, or just throughout the year. So the first one uh, is a nonfiction book, Broke Millennial. This one was in my wish list. So I'm, I'm interested to see, I don't know, this is just something that felt like relevant to me right now, <laughs> uh, especially right now. So I'm just, I'm curious to read and see what kind of insightful tips and things that I could find that'll hopefully help me with budgeting and just being more money savvy so the next two are part of a series they're actually the two novellas in the series and that is conclave and fire knight by penelope douglas these are the two novellas in her devil's knight series and the person that gifted them to me didn't realize they were just the novellas which is totally fine like i do want the entire series but the actual like the other regular books are super expensive and these ones are like five bucks a piece so but i am very excited that i actually got a start on this collection because every time i read the series on audio and just the, i want physical copies of the books but every time i go to like look at them i'm like oh, they're, they're so expensive and i already read them and i'm like do i really need to spend the money but like i want to but just it's never been the right time for me to pull the trigger and just buy them so i think i'm going to end up doing them like one at a time at some point so this is a good start to that and also by penelope douglas we got credence which is one i have been dying to read and the person that gifted that to me knows that <laughs> um so i am so excited to read this i may do a reading vlog for this i don't know it's just it's a highly anticipated book on my two tbr pile and i know it's been out now for like a year or two already yeah it came out in 2020 so it's been out for almost two years already but i wanted to read it physically i didn't want to do the audio or anything i wanted to be have the full experience of reading it so i i may i may do a vlog just for this book but we'll see other one i got gifted to me for christmas was the bear and the nightingale by katherine arden this was a recommendation for me from sam from thoughts on tomes this is like her absolute favorite series and she talks about it constantly and i i remember seeing this a lot when it came out and i was never really all that interested in it before i heard her gushing about this series so i decided to get the first book and give it a try it was another one i got for christmas so i did get i got the first three in a box set and that's the witchland series by susan denners we have truth witch wind witch and blood witch and these came in a box set together and then um i had another friend get me witch shadow so i got all of these <laughs> in hardback no less for christmas and um this is another recommendation from sam from thoughts on tomes who is this is another one of her absolute favorite series next you'll notice there's a ton of jr ward books in this entire video um, because I was going through a Jared Ward obsession last year when I started reading Black Dagger Brotherhood and I've only read the first two books but I wanted to collect them all so uh I've got a ton of them here that were gifted to me um I don't know necessarily the order of these that are they're in I do know that Lover Unveiled is the newest book in her Black Dagger Brotherhood series uh the next one I think it's Lover Arisen, I think, comes out in April or something, but I believe this was the last one in the series that recent, most recently came out. So I got that one. Then we have a couple ones that were like back in the back of the series, the back of the back of the series. <laughs> Further back in the series, we have The Sinner and we have The Savior. I don't, again, I don't know the orders of these like off the top of my head without looking, but I got both of these in hardcover. And again, a lot of these came from, I think, book outlet or something i don't know these again these were gifted to me but i'm pretty sure that's where they found them um next we have the we have blood fury which is part of the black dagger legacy i think this is the first one in the legacy series the spinoff i'm not sure don't quote me on that but i also have another one in the legacy series which is blood truth so we have two more in there and hopefully these stickers come off we'll i haven't tried yet 
but um, when I start putting them on the shelves, I'm going to try to peel all the stickers off. Okay, then we have the two first two books in the Black Dagger Brotherhood prison camp. So we have The Jackal and the new one that just came out, The Wolf. I have, I have so many books to read. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. And these are the last few that were gifted to me. So the next one I have is The Beautiful by Renee Adier. Uh, this is another Christmas one that I had on my wish list on Amazon as George Washington's Spy Master. How, how the Americans outspied the British and won the Revolutionary War by Thomas B. Allen. I, if you watched my vid my uh, TV shows I watched and binged in 2021, you'll know I had a huge turn obsession. And the American Revolution is probably one of my favorite periods in American history, at least. And Washington and the whole cult perspiring is like, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. So this was one of those little nonfiction books about the spiring. Okay, and we're down to the last couple that were gifted to me. So the next one was Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I had mentioned that I was really wanted to read this book. I couldn't find it anywhere and I was losing my mind. Couldn't <laughs> I don't know why. Like I didn't want to order it online, even though by the time I finally f got this one in hand, it probably would have been faster for me to order it online. But someone gifted it to me. So I'm, ex I'm surprised I haven't read it yet. I was so excited and eager to read it and I never did yet. Then we got Dear Evan Hansen, the novel. I went to see the movie of this, loved it. I have not seen the Broadway musical, but I really, really want to. And then this one has no cover, but this was gifted to me from my cousin. I went to her house for dinner one time and her husband handed me this book. And it's The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels by Alex Epstein. And it's just another like nonfiction book about, uh, secret history of fossil fuels and just energy future of energy greenhouse effect all that kind of stuff um it's very short it was interesting because it was showing there's like charts and i don't know it sounded interesting to me I, this was something i probably wouldn't like sit down and actively read i'd probably just peruse it but i, I any book that is given to me as a gift because someone thinks i would like it absolutely i will gladly take it uh, okay, what do we have next? So next we'll do, I, my library had a book sale this past fall, which is unusual because we normally have it in the summer, but they did it in like September or something. So I went to that and a ton of those books that I got were um, historical romances, but I'm not going to show them in this because I don't remember anymore which books came from the used bookstore haul that I did, the video that I did, and ones that came from that library hall or otherwise and I don't want to just give them all again so these are the ones I definitely know or I'm almost certain came from that library <laughs> again I, these were all mixed together on my floor and I don't I tried to separate them as best I could um but they she had they had a ton of Black Dagger Brotherhood in hardcover and I have them a lot of them in soft cover in a mass market paperback but if I'm trying to collect them in hardcover as well without buying them like brand new online so i did find the beast uh i found lover unleashed which is this one i do have in paperback as well um the shadows again and one that i have in paperback and the annoying thing about this book is it's smaller than the others like i don't i don't know why but like look at this the size difference is like super annoying and i don't know why this one is sized differently I think the paperback is also sized differently, which I think is super weird and annoying, but whatever. At least I got it in hardcover. Uh, and then I got Lover Avenged. And this was one of the ones that I was not able to find. I could not find it in the bookstore or anywhere like cheaply in paperback. And then I found it at the library. And I was super excited that I, I, I have it. I, like, I'm so excited. It was one of the ones that was like missing in like the middle of my series. And it was driving me absolutely nuts. And then surprisingly i found winter of the witch in hardback in beautiful condition which is the third book of the oh my god um 
I can't remember. I just, did I mention the name of the series before? I don't remember. It's the third book. It's after The Bear and the Nightingale. And then The Girl in the Tower is the second book, which is the one I still need. But oh my god, this the copy of this book is beautiful. And someone was trying to sell this for $25. I got it at the library sale for like super cheap. I don't remember if this was in my first go or my second go. But still, it was like a dollar or two dollars or something. And then if it was in my second go, the very last day is seven dollars a bag so you can stuff as many books as you want into a paper grocery bag and the entire bag is seven dollars so i got a shitload of hardcovers and historical romances for seven dollars i love my library book sale check them out in your area because sometimes there are gems you will find gems there that you cannot find that cheap anywhere else <laughs> You tell them I'm excited about it. I cannot wait for this summer. I hope they get, bring it back to the summer. Okay, so those are the books that I remember from getting mostly from my library book sale. Um, next are books that I bought myself. So I'm going to do all the books that I got from the used bookstore that I took you guys to in my come shopping with me. Um, again, most of these are J.R. Ward because that's what I generally go in there looking for and uh, historical romances but like I said those aren't there's one on here that is a historical romance because I recently found it in a trip that wasn't in that last one so the books that are not J.R. Ward <laughs> and the, the first historical romance I found was The Secret by Julie Garwood I have been looking all over for this book that's this is one of the books that I go in there looking for all the time and I never find it find it I never found it until this trip where I went in there not specifically looking for it. I was actually in there for a different reason, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but I just happened to walk by and I was like, oh, there it is. So I absolutely grabbed it. And I, I have this, I think the second book I found first, but I'm really excited that I finally found this one. And then the other one, again, that I was looking for in the actual bookstore. I was looking for it in Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble didn't have it. They had the second book. So I do have the second book in my further down the line. But that's White Out by Adriana Anders. This one I got as a recommendation from Jess from Peace Love Books. And it takes place in Antarctica. And I think they're like have to are on the run from like a killer or something in, the, in, in across Antarctica. Sounds so good. So I'm excited to that I found this one and I found it for $3 or $2. I think I had credits. So I got it for $2 when I would have paid, you know, eight or nine at the regular bookstore. So it's a win in my opinion. Okay. So the reason that I found these on that trip to the bookstore was because I was going for these. So I do follow this bookshop on Facebook and every once in a while they'll post, well, they post multiple times daily of new books that are getting traded in. Um, and I messaged them as soon as I saw these, I was like, can you hold these for me? I will be there this afternoon. And that is the entire Torpedo Inc. series by Cass uh, Christine Fian. The entire series. I had both two of these in my cart on, was it Amazon or something? I got this whole series for $2 a book. So I don't know the exact order of these, so just forgive me. <laughs> but we have Vendetta Road, Vengeance Road, Judgment Road, Desolation Road, which is the one that was in my cart on um, wherever it was. Reckless Road was the other one in my cart. Again, I'm going to try to hopefully get these stickers off. And then we have Annihilation Road, which I think is the newest one, or there's like one after this that wasn't that they didn't have but I haven't read any of these but I love MC romances so having the entire series that I can binge is a win for me then the other reason I went was because rarely very rarely do they ever get indie published books and all of us booktubers know what read into indie published books they're a little bit pricey they're like 14 15 dollars her book which is fine because it's the it's you know it's the author doing all of their marketing themselves they're not working with a publisher so I found the entire Outlaw Souls MC series again two dollars book because I had a bunch of books to trade in so you get a dollar off 
per trade-in and they're normally three dollars a piece so i got one of these books is ten dollars on amazon i got them all for two a piece i'm super excited i it's not a series that i was like really aware of but i could tell immediately when they post them i was like oh that's an indie published series and i googled it and it has really high ratings so i'm really excited to try these out so we do have we have writer pin trainer blade diego colt and moves and i think that's the order they're supposed to be in if i'm 100 percent sure um but yeah two dollars a book two dollars a book then we have a couple like miscellaneous ones um i did find miss peregrine's home for peculiar children actually i think this was in the library I take that back this was a library in that library hall because i was curious i just got the first book i was curious about the series i'm only going to read the first book just to try it out and see what i think that's why i didn't i got it like as cheaply as possible i saw it and just threw it in the bag i think that's when i got the seven dollar per bag and i just threw it in the bag um but i ended up in that hall i ended up getting like 28 books for seven dollars <laughs> you can't beat it because i literally spent a few cents on this book so um yeah but the cover is like gross can you see it it's like gross and there's crap on it so i just i really wanted to clean it off before i read it but it's a library sale what are you gonna do then i found this really cool copy of the lies of Locke lamora by scott lynch and again this was another book that is a favorite of sam from thoughts on tomes so i wanted to give it a try and it sounds really good but look at the, like the shiny cover is so cool so pretty love it this is one i don't know anything about it just kind of popped up i was just kind of browsing their one shelf where they post all the stuff that they share online and it sounded interesting to me and that is the ghost notebooks by ben dolnick i'm really not sure what it's about it's like a haunted house they're living in a haunted house or something hannah accepts the job as a live-in director of the Wright historic house a museum dedicated to an obscure 19th century philosopher whose life was marred by tragedy it sounds really good i don't know what i'm getting into and i kind of would prefer that it's not very long at all it's like 220 some pages but i'm curious i'm curious to see what i think then we have of blood and bone by Nora roberts which is book two in her chronicles of the one i do have book one i have had book one for several years now have not read it i have not unhauled it because i'm still curious to read it and i know that i think there's three or four books in this series i'm not 100 percent sure but i keep like getting the books in the series i haven't gotten whatever the magics the third one is something magics um i don't know i don't know why i haven't tried it and read it but i still want to so i still like it's still on my radar i just haven't picked it have felt the need to pick it up yet i don't know okay and then the last books that i got from the used bookstore and the primary reason i go aside from historical romances is to look at the if they got any new jr ward books that i can add to my collection so these are all the mass markets that i get um i do have prisoner of night which i think is one of the in-between books like the 18.5 or whatever 0.5 um and these have you've seen these before on this in this video but i got the paperbacks of sinner the sinner and paperback of the savior literally got these right before i got the hardbacks for christmas but i do sometimes prefer to read the paperback because it's easier to carry around especially with the the hardbacks are so big um and they're they're small enough that you can like take them and they're, they're floppy we love a, we love a floppy paperback next more in the devil and the devil's night oh my god more in the black dagger brotherhood i do have another in between a warm heart in winter a caldwell christmas this is another like in between one like prisoner of night is um and then we have another one you've seen already the jackal again that i found in a paperback version another taller oh no this see this is the tall paperback these are like normal size but like look like why 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 i don't i, I don't. then we have the first book of her lair of the wolven series which is claimed when it comes to paranormal romance i prefer like fae and vampires and like uh, things i'm not a big like 
werewolf wolf shifter person but who knows i may enjoy these and i don't know we'll give it a try then i have one of these i did not actually get at this bookstore but i found her books in her angel series so we have crave which i think is the second book in the angel series but what is it i don't know novel of the fallen angels and then immortal is another one this one's like further down in the series um but i've been having a real angel addiction lately wanting to read angel books so i got those two in the series so now we're going to go on to books that i got online so these are a bunch of books that i bought online whether it be from amazon thrift books better world books amazon marketplace what have you uh the first book is the first book of the Fallen Angel series, which is Covet by J.R. Ward. That, by the way, sneak peek will be in a reading vlog coming at some point in the hopefully near future. Then we have Scarred Souls by Tilly Cole. This is actually a two books in one. So this is Raise and then Reap. Um, and this is the dark romance series of like underground biters. And I'm very excited. I've been eyeing these books up for a long time and I can never find them like not in the bind up, but I figured whatever, getting them in this is better than not having them at all. These two, I didn't buy them. I bought them at two separate websites, but I've been dying to read them ever since I saw Riley Marie read them like a, a year or two ago. And that first one is The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith. And then I have The Archive of the Three God the archive of the forgotten which is the second book and i believe there's a third book as well but this it just sounds the series sounds so good and i'm very very excited to get to read it eventually hell's library trilogy or series is what it's called it just sounds really fun it's a, it's a library of like unwritten stories and all of these stories like break out and try to find their author to have them finish their book sounds really fun Huh. The next book was actually a book that I was going to gift to somebody and ended up keeping for myself, which is probably for the best because they ended up buying it for themselves anyway and they bought it for themselves in hardback. I bought it for them in a paperback and I got it as a used copy because I wasn't sure if they would like it and I didn't want to spend like a whole ton of money and them not like the book because I'm a I'm a <laughs> I'm one of those kind of shoppers that I'm like I don't want to spend a shit ton of money on this book that I may not even like. Um, but that's Red Rising by Pierce Brown. A, it's an adult I think it's an adult like fantasy series that I've kind of been like back and forth about whether I want to read it or not so it's one of those like, well I have the first book I'll read the first book see how I like it and then decide if I want to continue or not from there the next couple books are were from a reading vlog that I ended up not completing um, I may end up going back to it at one point but for right now it's on the back burner uh, so the first one I have is, wait, I'm missing one. Wait, I'm missing one. Here it is. Found it. Okay. <laughs> the first one was The Turncoat by Donna Thorland. I did read this one. I very much enjoyed this one and I'm going to end up giving it, I think I ended up giving it four stars. It's in my books I read in 2021 video, which I'll link up above if you want to check that out. And then in that same video and haul, or that same haul, I got the Tory Widow by Christine Blevins. These are historical romances set during the American Revolution. Um, if you couldn't tell, that was the video I was going to do. I may eventually do it, but right now, which I, had to, I did find the original footage that I had started with it, so I may keep that and keep doing it, but we'll see. We'll see where, where the future takes us. Um, then I also got the Midwife of Midwife of the Blue Ridge by Christine Blevins. I think that's the, the book she wrote before the Tory Widow. I'm pretty sure this is like her first one. Um, but again, it's set. I think it starts out in Scotland and then moves to America. Pretty sure. And then another book I got was The Colonel's Lady by Laura France. If you must know, I DNF'd this book. I just it wasn't what I wanted it to be. It wasn't for me. Uh, there's more about that in the video about the books I read in 2021. So then I got some uh, angel indie books about angel, fall angels, whatever. Um, the first one I got is Fallen 
by C.N. Crawford. This is the first book of the Hades Castle series. It's not a series I've heard a lot about and it has okay reviews on Goodreads but I like I said I've been in a serious like angel mood lately and I've been really wanting to read a lot of like angel romances so I got a, quite a few of them to pick up. Uh, the next one is Angel Fall by Suzanne E. And then one I'm super excited to read and that's Raphael by Tilly Cole. This has been on my Amazon wish list for like years now. I want to read it so bad. And I love the new cover. I wasn't sure because there's a different cover, but I don't know. I'm very excited. I splurged. Can you tell I splurged a little last year and bought some indies? I just, I love the um, covers of indies. Well, the covers, I love the, like the texture that the indie covers. It's like that matte cover. I love it. It makes me happy to touch it. <laughs> Another book I got um, online was A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore. This is a uh, traditionally published historical romance. I got Fighting to Be Free by Christy Molesley. So this was another one. This next one was another one that I got from a uh, recommendation from Riley Marie when she was reading, I forget which video it was that she was reading this in, but it's Borderline by Michelle Baker. And this is like a fae romance. I don't know. I heard Steely Core, Unsteely Core, and all I just immediately think of Fever series by Karen Marie Moaning, which I know people have like mixed feelings about. I for love that series. Like it's what got me into being really interested in reading about Fae and being that kind of and reading paranormal romance at all in general was that series. So now I'm like trying to find other things. And this was blurbed. Oh, that's right. She read books that were blurbed by Shauna McGuire. And that was her video. And I'll, I'll link that. I'll leave a link to that down below if you guys want to check out the video. It's from like last year or the year before. I don't know. It's from a while ago. But um, I was watching like backlisted videos. And this was, that sounded super interesting. And I know she really enjoyed this. So I picked it up off the thrift books, I think. And then the last book that I got online is The Left Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix. This keeps po kept popping up on everything I was look on the sites I was looking at. And I was, I don't know, I was interested in it. I don't, I think it's YA. I don't know. And it's like there's left handed booksellers and right handed booksellers. And there's like, there was like a magical difference. One's on like the fighting ones. And then the right handed booksellers are the intellectual ones. I don't know. It sounds interesting. I just, I like books set around like magical libraries or whatever like have to do with book related things they're just so interesting to me um and i do have another book by garth nix i think i do have sabriel but i haven't read it but that's the only other book of his that i have so so the last books are books that i brought bought brand new from the bookstore uh they're all from barnes and noble because that's the only like actual bookstore i have close to me to buy books from but these couple I do work at a retail establishment and we do sell books we don't sell like a wide variety of books and generally they're like the most like um common books that you would see in like a grocery store like the James Patterson's and the Nora Roberts but there were a couple things I picked up so of course I got the brand new Outlander book by Dana Gabaldon go tell the bees that I'm gone this is the only book of this series that I do have in hardback because they're massive the paperbacks are also <laughs> chunks they're bricks um but where i work you it's a membership store so you get there's a discount like I, this book normally brand new is 36 dollars. even at barnes and noble and you get like the 15 percent off the 10 percent off whatever i think i paid like 19 dollars for it from where i work so i'm gonna i'm probably <laughs> to be honest if I get to this, it's going to take years because I'm still in the beginning of book five. Yeah, The Fiery Cross. I'm, still, I'm only like 400 pages in that book. So it's probably gonna take me a really long time to actually eventually re get to this book and read it. But I have the whole series, so I have to have the new one. Duh. Next one is one that we had actually was the last book we had. And I grabbed it because I was like, I like the Peanuts. And that's Peanuts, the gang's all here. And it's just a book of comics. Now I do collect the complete bind up books that are like the hardback ones. I 
I haven't gotten any in a few years, but I do have been trying to collect them. But I love anything peanuts. Not I'm not like a Snoopy specific person. I actually really like Linus. He's my favorite character. Um, but I love the peanuts. I have all of the well as many as I can find of the specials on DVD and everything like I am a little bit of a you know we all have our thing that we like to collect besides books um, mine is peanuts stuff and this, like I said this was the last one we had on the shelf so I just bought it and decided to take it home um, and as I said before you know I have a th I love a th George Washington book about George Washington so this was the new book by Nathaniel Philbrick travels with George in search of Washington and his legacy um again this is a non-fiction book but i i enjoy reading about george washington he's one of my favorite historical figures okay the next book is one we're all familiar with and that is verity by colleen Ho colleen hoover i have not read a colleen hoover book but i know that either people love her books or they hate her books and this is one of the books that's like not in the same realm as the rest of her books it's a little bit different and it's got like more of like thrillery kind of psychological vibes to it and I was very surprised when I saw this on our book table I was like oh <laughs> snatch that up real quick and then these last few are ones that I there's an author I haven't heard of but now that I've like found these books I've been seeing her kind of all over the place now and it was these books were uh, uh not release they were put out around Halloween um so apparently she has a whole ton of them but um I got a bunch of Darcy Coates books and I think she's an Australian writer or she lives in Australia I'm not 100% sure um and I don't know publication order of any of these I just happened to see them on my the book table at work and I kept picking them up again because I liked the covers and they have like that matte finish on them so the first one I got is Craven Manor and then I got House of Shadows and I got The Caro Haunt and they're all like horror thrillery books and then the last one actually this was the first one I picked up that got me into looking into her was The Whispering Dead which is the first book of a series and this is the book I'm actually one of the books I'm still currently reading I was trying to do a reading vlog for um, reading like spooky books during the month of October can you guess I never finished it and I never finished this book and it's it's an easy read and I don't know why I just haven't sat down to finish it I think I'm actually probably going to do that today after I finish filming this video because it's just it's been on my currently reading for way too long and it's not that I'm not enjoying it I just haven't it's one of those books that like Halloween's over I lost kind of my mood to really read it I don't know but I need to finish it for sure so I got a couple and then I've been finding I know there's another the second book in this series is coming out soon and she has a whole ton of other backlisted books that I've been there's a whole like shelf at the one Barnes Noble I went to that has all her books there and, I'm, and I know people have been reading her somewhat new book Parasite I think is what it's called I, I don't know I gotta do, deep delve deep more deeply into this author we're on our last stack now the last stack are all the books that I bought from Barnes and Noble I don't generally I'd like to browse Barnes and Noble but it's dangerous for me to go in there because there's so many books that I want to buy but they're like buying a book at Barnes and Noble as much as I want to support bookstores it, they're a little bit expensive and I end up spending 70 80 dollars like every time I go in there and it's just it's bad it's really bad so I try not to I go in there with like a specific goal this is the book I'm looking for if they have it great if they don't have it that's when I get into trouble because I try to find I'm not going to drive the 30 minutes to the Barnes and Noble not to buy something so I usually try to go with, with this is what I'm wanting to get sometimes it doesn't work out that way and I buy $70 worth of books instead of one anyway okay so the first chunk of books are all nonfiction Anthony Bourdain books so we have his first book, Kitchen Confidential. Then we have the second book with a follow-up to Kitchen Confidential, which is Medium Raw. And then we have The Nasty Bitch, which is kind of like a, ooh, this sounds interesting. Let's grab this one. I got these books after I watched, we went to see his um, movie Roadrunner. It wasn't his movie. It was like a, not really a biopic, but like a documentary thing about his life since, you know, he passed away uh, a few years ago or a couple of years ago. 
Um, so they released a documentary about his life and what led up to his eventual death. And I love Anthony Bourdain. I used to love watching um, No Reservations in the Layover. And I always wanted to get Kitchen Confidential and I never did. And then I finally was like, you know what? Now's the time. So I got that one plus these other, two, other three. Then we had another one that I was eagerly awaiting and that is Clan Lands by Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish. This is the book that goes along with Men in Kilts on um, Star's channel where they travel around Scotland and learn about the Scottish history and heritage and everything like that. I have not, I think I still read the, and this one is, the foreword is by Diana Gabaldon. I think that's as much as I read into this so far, but I do want to eventually read this as well. Okay, remember like way, way back in this, toward the beginning of this video when I was mentioning that I got that moosh movie, that book White Out by Adriana Anders? Well, this is the book I found in the bookstore when I was looking for White Out, which is the second book, Uncharted, which I think is set in Alaska. And he's a bush pilot or something. I'm not sure, but it's floppy. We all love floppy paperback. All right. Then we got The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. Again, this is a book that I got because I was watching Riley Marie do a reading video, a reading vlog for, I think it was books that had the same cover of similar to books that she had liked. I can't remember what the exact title was, but she was finding, like she would pick a book that she loved and find a cover that had like a similar vibe to it and read those books. And she ended up really, really loving this book and then went on to read the other books in the series. So I got the first one to give it a try because it sounds super interesting and fascinating. Then after I read last year, The Whisper Man by Alex North, I wanted to read more by this author because I really enjoyed that book. So I got The Shadows to try to give that one a try again. I feel like I have more thrillers and things than I thought I ever would. I, like I, that was a series, a genre I was kind of like not interested in all that much, but I have a, quite a few now on my shelves. Then we got The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. I know like in some places this is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, but because the title is so similar to The Seven Lives of Evelyn Hugo, I think that's what that one's called. Like the two, the, the coincidence of these titles is way crazy. <laughs> but this was another one. I think this is another like thrillery book. Then we have the third book of the, I don't know if it's the actual series, the Well Met series. I don't know if there's an actual like name for that series. I don't remember what it is, but that's, well, no, this is the second, third book, Well Matched. I do have Well Played as well. I think I get, that's up there. Um, but yeah, Well Matched. So I need to finish this. I loved Well Met. I heard people that weren't a, as much of a fan of the second book, but like the third book more. The first book was still the best one. I don't know. I just love that it's set at a Renaissance fair. That's like super fascinating to me and so interesting and fun. Okay. These next three books were again, recommendations from Riley Marie in a video that she did. So this first one was Hench by Natalie Zena Walshot. This is another one that she did in her blurbed by Sean and McGuire video. And that was, she was very pleasantly surprised by, and it sounded super interesting. Um, where this girl works for, I think she is a secretary for villains or something. I can't remember 100%. Does boring things for terrible people because even criminals need office help and she needs a job. So this sounds really fun and interesting. Um, then there, I have a horror book that she read called The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. Um, I'm not a huge horror person. But when she reads, like, she reads a lot of horror and, like, weird horror stuff. And, like, when she reads it, like, it sounds super interesting with how she describes it. So I'm, I'm willing to give some things a try. <laughs> um, so this was one of those that I'm, like, I found it and was really, I know she didn't like the other books she read by this author. The Twisted Ones. I know she didn't really like the Twisted Ones, but she was pleasantly surprised by this one. So I got it to give it a try. And again, the next one that was in a video that she read was Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. And this was one that I, I don't remember a lot about, but I heard people like 
enjoyed it. They had a fun time with it. It's a chunk of a book. It's 600 pages, 600 and some pages. It's a brick. It's heavy. <laughs> they used very heavy paper for this book. Um, but I don't know. I'm curious. I'll give it a try. We're down to the last three now. So the next book was one that I've I wanted to, I've been wanting to try this author. I didn't want to necessarily try start with this book, but I feel like I I should maybe because I think the next the other book I wanted to try was part of a series and I wanted to do like a not a series book first just to see. Um, and that's a hundred the hundred thousand kingdoms by N.K. Jemison. I know there's people that loved this book. Riley loved this book. Um, I think Jess from Peace Love Books was like it was like okay. Um, I don't remember what Sam from Thoughts on Tomes thought of it but they've all read it and I wanted to originally start with the fifth season because I think it's like an it's somewhat easy to kind of get into the the world and the the whole system of characters and magic system um but this one sounded super interesting and fun too so I this is the one I found first so we'll see how I like it the next book I got was Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren now I no, there's like a love-hate relationship with Christina Lauren. I haven't read many of their books. I read Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating and it was fine until the ending. I know a lot of people thought the same way that they weren't a fan of the ending of that book. And then I read The Unhoneymooners and I loved it. And those are the only two books I read by them. I do have my first Half Night Stand still on my shelf that I have not read yet. And I wanted to read Roomies as well. I have not read any of their new stuff after the end honeymooners because I heard it was like not good. It's like their writing kind of went downhill after that book or actually that book was like the first in a while that was good but I heard that this series is the where it's at with them because um, it's the first thing they wrote before they started doing like the other rom com -y stuff. And this is what everyone says is where their really their best work is so I'm excited to finally give this series a try and give them another try as authors. Finally. We're at our last book. This book was not one I bought at Barnes and Noble. I didn't buy this at Barnes and Noble. I actually bought this at Target. And it was kind of like an on a whim thing. Like it was a book that I was, it was on my radar. I was interested in reading it. And I just kind of was browsing through Target the one day because there, our book section is right by like the pet section. And I had to get like cat litter and stuff. So I was like, I always just kind of weave through the book aisle on my way to the pet section. And I found this one and was like, mm, I want to read that. And I kind of like impulsively bought it, which is always a bad thing. Um, but that's Paybacks of Witch by Lana Harper. I think this is actually a sapphic romance and they're witches. I don't know, but it's blurred by Shauna McGuire on the back. So this was not, a, <laughs> this was not a Riley Marie recommendation. Um, at least not that I saw, um, but you know, in case you were wondering, it's blurred by Shauna McGuire. So actually confession time, I have not read anything by Shauna McGuire. I do have the first two books of the Wayward Children series on my shelves that I have to read, but that's so far, that's not, I haven't written it, read anything by her. So yeah, anyway, those are all of the books that I got within the last like year. There was like a hundred of them. There's more. I know there's more, but I'm not going digging for them because I already stacked them and put them back on the shelves. So we're not going to worry about those. And I'm sorry this video is super long, but thank you so much for watching if you stuck with it to the end. I know. Yes, I know. Give me two minutes. Two minutes and we'll go. Um, That's it for this video. I will hopefully do shorter hauls in the future. I might do them in with other th other videos so I don't have massive book haul videos like this again. Um, but now I have to go take this little one out because she's being needy. And that's it for me for this one guys. I will see you again in another video. Bye!